Um, so actually, I didn't really volunteer this talk, I volunteered somebody else to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody put their hand up, so I, uh, I did some, uh, some research uh, a few weeks ago and I was able to get a, um, a private repo to publish through Ansible and then I was going to clean it all up for this presentation today on the weekend, it all fell apart and my machine died on me. So I've been struggling today to try and get something together for you um, and I'm afraid I don't have the private repo part which is really disappointing, it might have to be a version 2 uh, uh, talk uh, for next month or something like that if people are still interested. Um, so, so what is Ansible? Ansible, I, I, I was sort of looking around for ways of, of um, uh, doing sort of DevOps as a non-DevOps kind of person um, where I could just sort of spool up some, you know, cloud servers and put my, you know, pull down my Git repo and put it all into uh, some kind of, uh, you know, process manager type environment and just have it up and running uh, nice and, and neat. And um, something I sort of stumbled across was Ansible and there was some nice little um, uh, tutorials which I'll, I'll sort of put all the resources together and put it onto, um, onto um, GitHub. Um, and uh, yeah, simply put, yeah, like you can, you can sort of do all of this with batch files or um, you know, command line anyway. Um, but Ansible's kind of a nice way of maybe just trying to bring together into a familiar setup. Essentially what they have is, um, uh, and if I'm sort of jumping around a bit, just stop me. Can we um, zoom? Sorry? Can we zoom? I think so. Thanks. I like can add plus plus. Where is my plus plus? Can you see that? Um, so I'm sort of diving in straight away. They have this sort of notion of playbooks, which is um, a, a YML file, a YAML file, uh, and just follows that sort of syntax. It's a nice um, uh, sequential execution, so uh, when it just steps down from top to bottom. Um, and uh, yeah, you can start out your playbook um, just by sort of giving it some general details, a name of what the task, the first sort of thing it's going to do, the hosts, the connections, and um, uh, gather the facts. I won't go through every sort of uh, detail because I really don't have enough time for a short talk, but um, uh, essentially hosts uh, tells you what you've got, what resources you've got access to. Um, I'm going to run this as a de live demo from uh, a local host, so it means this machine will do all the sort of provisioning. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is set up here in the, in the variables uh, a region security group instance type, an image which will be a Ubuntu Linux image uh, and a key pair. So I've got all of the key pair and um, private keys and whatnot from the Amazon AWS, AWS servers already set up on my computer, so I won't, I won't go through that part, but assuming that you know how to do that, you can set up some tasks for Ansible to do uh, within um, the Amazon Web Services. What I've got here is I'm going to create a security group, uh, which will be the BridgeJS security group. Um, I've given it some rules, a region, which will be Sydney, uh, and then I'm going to go through and launch three servers, all instances of the Ubuntu machine image that I've got up there. Uh, and I'm going to pull in these, these variables that I've set up here for the region and security group. The syntax that they use here is uh, double brackets and um, uh, inverted commas, uh, double commas quotations to pull in those variables. Um, and is where I got up to essentially, which was um, adding the um, uh, the 
SSH key pair details to my hosts and those will get added in here. This is a bit of a hack way to do it. Uh, and then to wait for the SSH details to come back through. Um, the way I'm going to run this is just from a little bash file. Uh, Have to do the command plus. Uh, you probably just have to scroll up. Yep. See that there now. So hopefully this works. Live demo. So it's going through. It's creating the security group. Um, it's going to launch the instances, it shouldn't take too long and it'll just tell us what it's doing hopefully when it comes back after launching uh, what will be three um, uh, of the two instances and I'll just go over here. Those are those are previous ones that I was just doing as testing. You can see here that we've launched three there they've come back with the details, it's waiting for the SSH to come back. Um, it's a whole lot of guff that it's telling us uh, the state that they're running. It's a T1 micro instance. Uh, it's in Sydney there. Uh, and these will probably take a, a minute or two to, to, to respond for us. Um, so, yeah, they're up and running. Uh, wish I had a before and after shot. Been nice proof of the push, but um, uh, yeah, essentially, so all of that uh, playbook in there established those three uh, servers that will do servers up and running. Um, the next step will be, oops, sorry, the next step will be, there we go, it's responding now. That means it's ready for me to SSH into. Uh, and the next step will be to do that and then to um, pull down my GitHub repo, set up some um, Node.js stuff or whatever it is, myo.js, pull down your repos and, and get them going. So I'm sorry I haven't been able to do the whole demonstration, but maybe next time I'll, uh, I'll be able to do version two or something like that. Um, what advantage does this give you over CloudFormation? Um, yeah, look, I just haven't really played with, with those ones. Um, this one was sort of the first one that I, I thought I'd ever crack at. Um, so those are the ones that Amazon provide, and they're basically the same except it's JSON instead of YAML? Yeah, yeah, look, I don't know, I've seen on Amazon, you know, web services website, they sort of say, oh, we think Ansible's the way to go. And there was some discussion I found somewhere about um, why you would use one against the other, but yeah, well, you can go to uh, DigitalOcean or, or whatever, or some other other platform. And just just go to them instead of uh, Amazon. Yep. So yeah, so there's they're responding there. And that's all I got up to. Uh, so, uh, so when you say you're waiting for the SSH to come up with. I guess you yeah, haven't played around with this too much, but then you uh, you SSH into. It, does it sort of somehow give you access to all three environments at once? Or yeah. Do you, do you Sorry. Yeah, design? I should have. Um, so what it's returned there. So that's our hosts file. Uh, I've popped all that back in uh, after I've returned the um, uh, the address of each instance. Uh, and Ansible has a private key file which I've stored in my you know, SSH folder. Uh, so the next time when I want to start installing stuff on there, like you know, Node or whatever, you know, my code, um, I'll use one of these instances with the SSH file. Uh, so the, the, the key pair file to um, to look into it and then do things, install things on it. Right, but you you still have to go through each one. It it, it doesn't give you the like. I almost thought you were describing like you it, it was like you were logged 
SSH into one, and it would like put your commands through to all three instances or something. You like script up all your configuration things. So if you needed to install Node on the server, you script up an SSH command to install it for you, and then you tell Ansible to do it, and it would do it on all the machines that you told it to do it on. So you never, you wouldn't really manually SSH into the machines. That's really against the whole DevOps mindset. The idea is you script up everything, and then you just say, "Hey, you do it," and it'll get done for you. Yeah, it can take the return and then do stuff on each of the um, on each of the instances when it's when they're ready, essentially. So that's what we were waiting for before we for those instances to be ready, uh, and then it'll take those. This is where version two comes in, or step two, phase two <coughs> comes in. Yeah, I could take those and for each one of those launched instances. Um, I can do stuff, I can pull you know, repositories out for them. Cool, other questions? Oh, okay. Um, have you used Vagrant to provision this sort of stuff? I've been looking at that as well, and also things like Packer and uh, all these sorts of technologies, but uh, this is my first few steps, and I'm filling the void of nobody else having volunteered, so uh, maybe, maybe once I've um, got more familiar, I can. So you can use the provisioners from the Vagrant to keep up your installs and then from there run a different label for each item. Yeah, okay. Cool. It's, it's just a thing to go from the I guess. Yeah, 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 I was looking at, at creating to, to Vagrant. Cool. Thanks, everyone.